Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my 2022 bullet journal setup. And this year I am once again using a notebook from Scribwell. Um, I just really like these notebooks. They have 208 dotted pages, which is perfect for me because I like to squeeze everything into one notebook. There are two ribbon bookmarks and there is also a handy pocket in the back which is perfect for all the stickers and miscellaneous things i collect throughout the year so without further ado let's get into the setup this year i have decided to go for a video game theme because i feel like every year we just need a fresh start and what better fresh start than pressing start to a new video game. So that's kind of the theme of this. So I started out with this 2022 loading page and this page was a little difficult to create simply because this first page is not dotted. This is like the page next to the like book cover and I just didn't want to waste that page, so I like to include something there, like a hello to the year. And um, it just made it difficult because I actually needed little squares for the 2022 because I wrote it out in a little pixel kind of font. Kind of reminds me of Tetris, which I don't know if that's like dating myself, but that was one of the first like Game Boy games I had was Tetris. Lots of fun, played way too much Tetris to be honest, but it was great. It was a good time. So I am just using a ruler and kind of trying to be as neat as possible with making these little squares. I did make a few mistakes along the way, but nothing that couldn't be fixed with a little bit of whiteout. And for colors, I pretty much just chose random bright colors. I wish I had just gone with a simple kind of red and black, maybe yellow gaming kind of colors, partially because the book is red and partially because of a page, a quote page that I do later on in the video but that's okay. I went for kind of bright and purple, almost neon-esque colors for this page. And I think it turned out pretty cute in the end, but looking back, I do wish that I had used like red and black and maybe some gold even, but <laughs> there's my cat coming in to check everything out. He loves to help with everything going on. So he's a little sweetie. <laughs> And back to whiting out those few little mistakes I made along the way and coloring in all the squares. Um, this bit is quite time consuming because the squares are very tiny. They are like half a centimeter by half a centimeter. So very small. And I went for green for the loading bar because that seems to be a classic color for loading bars. So just stuck with a classic for that one. These are all the colors I ended up using. All of the markers you see here are going to be the King Art Dual Tip Brush Pens. These are my favorite favorite markers to use in my bullet journal. I have never had a problem with them bleeding through the page. Um, I find Crayola super tips can bleed through a lot of the time, especially if you have to go over things more than once. And these are just such a good set of colors. And I love that there's the brush end and the little nib on the other side because it makes it super easy to do lettering or small spaces or use them for a larger area. So yeah, I love these things. Um, I might have to get some more because I think a few of them are actually starting to run out of ink at this point and that makes me really sad because I love them so much, but I think I've had them for two years at this point 
and I use them on almost every single bullet journal spread I make. On to my index and what better um, video game-esque thing to do for an index than a main menu page. I tried to make this page look a little, I don't know, circuit board-esque? I don't think that's the right word, but I just kind of put these like bars at a diagonal and these will be where I'm writing main menu, page, and contents. And then I go in with the nib end of the marker and I add some little lines, I don't know, to kind of connect the little areas and some little circles to kind of look circuit breaker I I don't know. I tried. This was difficult for me to come up with an idea for and I think it turned out decent in the end. Only regret again would be maybe using red instead of the blue, but that's okay. I think the blue and yellow look really good together. And this is just a super simple way to keep track of the pages that you've done. This book is not numbered, so I will have to go in and number the pages as I go, but I will write down the page and the contents of that page. Next is my dot grid cheat sheet. If you are a first time bullet journaler, I highly, highly recommend doing a dot grid cheat sheet, at least for your first journal. Um, I've been using the same notebooks for the past two years. This will be the third year using a Scribwell one. So I have kind of memorized what um, the dots and the squares are, but if you are using it for the first time, this is a super, super handy page to flip back to just to know for spacing and if you're doing anything super detailed and you want quarters or halves or thirds, you can split it into fifths if you'd like, however many little increments you will need mark those on this page and if you find you're using one um, quite often you can add that in later on but I just stuck with half thirds and quarters on mine and now on to my quote page this is a quote from Taylor Swift and it is in one of her songs and it says love is a ruthless game unless you play it good and right and I thought this would be the perfect quote for a gaming themed journal. So I am just drawing out a little pixel heart here and I'm going to color that in using red and I also kind of made it look like the word ruthless was like the wire or like the cord going to the little gaming controller. This got a little messy and I did forget to cross the T initially. I do that afterwards. I didn't realize that until after I had filmed my little flip through at the end, but that is fixed now. And for this page, I pretty much stuck with those red and gold and black colors. And this is why I wish I had done that throughout the setup because I love the way those colors turned out together. I love the way they all complement each other and really bring out that gamer vibe. So yeah, I kind of regret not using these colors throughout but I also think I needed a little bit more color in my life, so it worked out in the end, but I just love the way this page turned out. The gold marker pen thing I'm using, um, I've also had for years, the name is rubbing off, but I believe it is just the gold metallic recollections marker. And you can find that at Michael's, probably at other craft stores as well, but I found it at Michael's years ago. And once again, I'm just using the King Art brush pens to fill in the other colors. Who else is a major Taylor Swift fan? I love that she is re-releasing her old albums. It's bringing back so much nostalgia and also like 
the new vault tracks are just amazing can't believe we missed out on those and so glad she had this opportunity to you know bring them out when they may have never come out otherwise so i think this is a really cool time to be a swifty the next page i am working on is my future log and for this, I decided to put all of the calendars into little Game Boy shapes. And each Game Boy is going to be a different color. And I kind of tried to go in like an order that made sense. It's not exactly a rainbow, but it, I don't know, it makes sense in my head. It is almost rainbow-esque. <laughs> So starting out with this purple one for January and I used my Cricut to make some stickers of the months and I used clear sticker paper for these and I think they look really good. It's just the matte clear sticker paper from online labels and I just did black letters. And look, magically all the months get filled in. Wow, amazing. Next, moving on to my goals and kind of random idea pages. So of course, I decided to call this section Achievement Unlocked. Um, you know, every time you're playing a game, you unlock different achievements throughout. So that's what I'm going to be doing with my goals throughout the year. I thought this was a genius plan. I'm sure many other people have thought of it, but I just loved the idea of having little achievements and feeling productive throughout the year every time I get to like fill one in or unlock one of my achievements. And I will go back later on and color in the lock with that gold recollections marker. But I'm just going to fill in all the sections with their titles and um, a few little doodles. So for YouTube, I drew the YouTube play button as well as just writing out YouTube. And on one side, I'm going to have goals and on the other side, I'm going to have ideas. So I did color in the little YouTube logo with the red and I colored in the little light bulb with a bright yellow. And to show you an example of one of the goals, I am hoping to post one video per week next year and I'm calling this goal consistent content. And then I have the exact same setup for Etsy, my goals and ideas, except I do still need to print out my logo for Etsy. That's what's going to go in that little box there. Then for reading, I have quite a few things. So first, are just sort of general reading goals on this side and then I have what I call TBR or trash which is generally a list of backlog books that I have a physical copy of that I would like to read before the end of the year or else I plan on getting rid of them somehow whether that be donating giving to a friend selling whatever it may be they are leaving my possession <laughs> So I have my general reading goals and then TBR or trash and then I'm going to move in to sort of a books read section right after this. So I like to keep track of books read two different ways. I like the aesthetic look of this sort of bookshelf that I can then color in with little books throughout the year. It's just fun for me and I think it looks cute once it's filled in. So I'm just using a brown to make the borders. I'm not doing anything super fancy, just kind of doing two square for the um, outside border and then one square for the actual shelves. And I'm writing books red at the top and that's it for this page. 
The next way I like to keep track of books read is in a list form, and I decided to turn the book sideways for this one this year because I felt like I didn't have enough space last year when I did it the opposite direction. So this year I have space for the title, the author, and the star rating. Last year I just wrote the title and the stars because I did not have enough space because I write fairly large, so if you write smaller you might not have this problem but I definitely do. And my goal is to read 52 books, so I will need a third page for this section. And I'm just writing all the numbers along the side. I might go back and add some color to the like title, author, stars area, but I have not decided what to do with that yet. <laughs> And then I also want to keep track of readathons and read-alongs that I am interested in. I don't always participate in all of the ones I write down, but I do like to have a list to kind of reference and to look at if I'm interested in participating in something. I think they're fun. And then I also just have a simple to watch and games page. For these, I like to make a little like bar on the side and separate or do a little check for things I want to watch, things that I've started and things that I've finished. And for games, I like to have bought, played, and 100%. So for these, I used pink, purple, and blue as the colors. And I think those are kind of cutesy gaming colors. And then I did add one of my little Perfect Player One stickers up in the corner there. And last but not least is a wish list and gift ideas section. So this next year, anything I come across that I would like, I'm going to write down on my wish list to give to people for Christmas. <laughs> and here is the final flip through. I think it turned out pretty cute. I am quite happy with it. I am very excited for a new year, a fresh start, like I said, and I am hoping that 2022 will be a better year than 2020 and 2021 have been. And here you can see some of the goals a little bit more filled in to get an idea of what these pages will actually look like and then I'll fill in the boxes once those goals have been completed. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.